local friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide. And we're on February 17th, 2023. Welcome to another Surviving Day on the Planet. Welcome to the Daily Do. Thank you so much for watching tonight and inviting me into your living rooms or wherever you're watching from. Thank you for tuning in. Having a look here at the last 48 hours on our sun, we do have an X-Class solar flare to talk about. Coming from the northwest region, which is the top left of our sun, you can see that fiery plasma region. You're going to see it here on the right-hand side. This is the last 48 hours incoming, as that was a pretty active sunspot region. Look at that. Wild stuff, folks. X-Class solar flare. I'm not even sure if this is the actual image of it. But this just happened, and it was from that region that I just showed. Looking the last 48 hours outgoing, no major events to talk about. Still some pretty active sunspot regions. Multi-spectrum here. Be able to see all of the events on our sun, as it does look pretty active. Northwest region producing an X-class solar flare that was pretty much just detected a couple hours ago. So they may not have even updated the images here with SDO, but this is nevertheless the last 48 hours of imagery. Having a look, 171 angstroms, still a couple coronal holes hanging around for an earth-facing view, right in an earth-facing position. So heads up, we could see coronal hole enhanced wind stream over the next 24 to 36 hours but we were affected by this large x-class solar flare right away looking at the DRAP highest frequency affected you can see during the day we were still in a c-class solar range so we were still being affected and then bam there is our x flare and it was a long duration x flare right over the Pacific Ocean, slowly moving as, of course, as our planet turns around, heading across the Pacific Ocean. But still, very large and long duration X-class solar flare. It was an X1.5, looking here at the flare class models, Solar X-ray flux right up into the X range, X1.5. So instantly created a radio blackout watch. Looking at geomagnetic activity, it is low. Strong radio blackout impacts are expected here. High frequency radio communication, possible loss of radio. Looking here at the ISWA space prediction spiral, showing an outgoing CME right towards Venus. I'm not too sure if that was the region that just produced the X-class flare or not. But stay tuned. We will have the latest images as they come in. Having a look here, Lasco 2. You can see in the last frame there on the 17th, definitely saw a CME from the northwest region taking off in the last couple of images there. Schumann resonance for today is another low power of 7. Quality of 8.1 and a power of 5, amplitude of 5. Now let's get to earthquakes as we have seen an increased number here over the past 24 hours. We were at about 250 last night, sitting at about 220 right now across the USGS. But it started out with a large 6.1 earthquake in Tuol, Indonesia. So that's two days in a row, 6.1 Philippines and then 6.1 Indonesia. Solomon Islands, pretty deep earthquake there, 4.8. And as well, Kermadec Islands, quiet, 4.5 only. Japan seeing some activity today. Nago, Japan, 5.2. As well, Guam region, 4.2, 4.8 there. South of Kamchatka. And then up into Alaska, 4.0. And most recently here, a 3.8 in Kaktovik, Alaska. 4.6, notable here, Port McNeil, Canada, off the British Columbia coastline, right at the tip of the Juan de Fuca plate. 
pretty much quiet across the North American plate. Minor activity, to say the least. Caribbean plate, looking at the valley here, Anguilla, 4.5. Minor activity through east. Puerto Rico, 5.3 there, Mid-Atlantic Ridge, and a 4.5 here, Peru, 139-kilometer depth. Carrying on here to the African plate, as we saw, 4.9 and a 4.3 in Kintiku, Kintinku, and as well in Kungi, Tanzania, seeing a 4.9 and a 4.3. Turkey, yet more earthquakes continue, aftershocks through the region, 4.2 and a 4.5 there. Romania, you got to wonder what's going on there in parts of Europe. Heads up, stay aware and prepared, can't be flagry large volcano just north of Etna and Stromboli. Having a look here at the last seven days for shakers across the world, we've seen a, a pulsating week, I would say, but we've seen a lot of deep earthquakes, still expecting something larger here over the next couple days, especially with our space weather penetration coming up. We have incoming space weather tomorrow, and it's going to continue on here. So heads up, especially through the North American plate this week. Stay aware and prepared. That's what it's all about. Wanted to share here, uh, looking at upper level winds, showing our polar vortex it has, as it has split pretty much right across the northern hemisphere into two. One low pressure system and one high but look at these winds stretching down to Africa. You got the polar vortex bringing in easterly winds over Labrador through Canada. And I wanted to share with you what it looked like last year at this time, especially right around the equator. Look at these strong upper level winds over eastern Russia, or sorry, western Russia. Now I'm going to show you here, this is, let's go back a year ago today, February 17th, 2022, and see our equatorial plane there. This is now, and this was last year. So something's off, and something's off big time. We know that our North Pole, North Pole is dramatically moving closer towards Siberia. And that our magnetic fields have changed and are being compromised due to solar cycles. Dramatic changes in the weather, I guess, are next. And it's purely evident here over the Pacific Ocean. Much love, everybody. I hope you enjoyed today's video and information shared. Have a good night. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun. And get your daily due. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.